Alrighty, so hey guys, it is Tuesday, January 15th, 2013. My name is TJ Mercier, and this is Ice Court and Field, the new YouTube sports casting show with a twist. Thing like the Philip DeFranco show, but like mixed with Sports Center. We will be covering very important and very silly stories that are going on in the sports world, and we'll have people on to talk about those sports. We'll have like special guests and stuff. It's all going to be very exciting. But for now, let's move on to the first story of the day, which is Lance Armstrong. USA Today has reported that Lance Armstrong has admitted to using performance-enhancing drugs in an interview with everybody's favorite shoulder to cry on, Oprah Winfrey. Now, aside from the frustration that I will have to watch the Oprah Winfrey network in order for me to see this interview, this is a very infuriating story for me. Lance Armstrong, for those who don't know, was the winningest cyclist in the history of the sport, winning the Tour de France seven times. But all of his titles from August 1998 until his retirement were vacated as a result of the findings that the USADA did on whether or not he used performance enhancing drugs. Lance Armstrong vehemently denied this until recently when according to sources, Lance admitted that he not only used PEDs to get him those seven Tour de France titles, but he in fact used PEDs before he was even diagnosed with cancer. This means he could have been using PEDs from 1996 all the way up until his final retirement in 2011. And as a supporter of Lance Armstrong throughout his entire career, it really raises a lot of questions as to whether or not he would have been a great cyclist without him. Now, people have been very outspoken as to what they think of Lance Armstrong since he's been stripped of all his titles. I mean, Bryant Gumbel of uh, Real Sports even said, Even though we've witnessed the disgrace of Pete Rose, the exposure of Tiger Woods, and the incarceration of OJ, it's hard to think we've seen any athlete in any era fall so hard, so fast, as Armstrong. While I can't think of any single athlete more de undeserving of empathy, I'm sure many will note the money he raised for cancer research and see him simply as a flawed hero, but in light of his cited patterns of deception, intimidation, and coercion, it's hard not to see even his charity work as simply part of his con act. Now I'm not going to excuse Lance's PED use because that frankly is inexcusable, but get your hands off of Livestrong. Livestrong, the charity that Lance Armstrong created to help fight cancer has raised hundreds of millions of dollars for cancer research. So the fact that Armstrong has cheated more than Tiger Woods did on his wife is completely irrelevant. And to put Lance's steroid use in the same sentence as OJ's murdering of two people, alleged murdering of two people, it's ridiculous and it does injustice to the great show that Brian Gumble hosts. But anyways, for those interested in seeing the interview, it will be in two parts on the 17th and 18th at 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time on the Oprah Winfrey Network known as OWN. Now on to a more lighthearted story about the NFL and Joe Flacco, who was on the cover of Sports Illustrated recently, which would be great news, except for what it said on the cover. It said, Dear Joe, last weekend you took down Peyton. On Sunday you get Brady. And the chance, once and for all, to rewrite your legacy. All the best, the football gods. The article in question was written by Peter King and argues that Flacco is actually one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. He cites that Flacco has more wins than any QB since 2008 and he has, I believe it's 61. Still, it argues that Flacco has been denied the praise because of what the Ravens have always been a defensive-minded team. As for what I think, I have to say that I actually agree with this. Flacco is a great quarterback. I would rank him in the top five, top six. I mean, he wouldn't be part of like a best all-time discussion, but yeah, I, I, the guy turns it on late, and when he turns it on, there are very few Q QBs that I fear more than Joe Flacco, and this is coming from a Pats fan who had to deal with Peyton Manning every year. Still, Flacco will be going up against a surging Pats secondary who who are looking to shut him down and to silence all of their critics as well in what is going to be a intense rematch of last year's playoff game. For those interested, the Pats and Ravens will be playing for the AFC Championship on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on CBS. Our last story of the day is about the NHL and it is back. With the NHL starting its regular season on Saturday, people are worried the damage may have already been done. After months of labor talks and hockey politics putting the sport on hold, many are worried that the fans won't come back. After all, this was the second NHL lockout since 2004, and the third since 1994, and it's becoming quite clear that this sport is just not organized. I myself am one of the people who 
are very interested in this sport. I mean, if you look behind me, you'll see I have a Tim Thomas jersey that is signed that sits back there. If I turned you this way, you would also see that I have Derek Sanderson and Bobby Orr photos. So I do care about this sport, but that doesn't mean that they can just continue to play with my emotions. Gary Bettman is not somebody that I would have hired to be the commissioner of a kids hockey league, let alone the NHL. And Donald Fear is one of the worst union leaders I've ever seen. He nearly tanked baseball and then for good measure just decided to tank hockey as well. But still, hockey is one of the most entertaining sports that I've ever watched in my entire life. And even though I hate the people who are in charge of this sport, I'm going to have a hard time staying away from the exciting action that this sport brings. But that is it for me today, which brings us to the question of the day, and that is, what do you think of Lance Armstrong? Do you think he's a flawed hero? Do you think he's a despicable human being? Do you think he's somewhere in between? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to like and subscribe, there are buttons down there near the description where you can click and then you'll receive more of these. Uh, we're going to be doing these fairly regularly. Um, but my name is TJ Mercier and I'll see you on Thursday.